guys, I am Chris Kaler and I'm Amber Foss from QGN and we're back with The Sopranos. Uh, episode 6, first season. Yes, I did not look at the title of this one so I don't know what it is. It's fine. Last episode, college. Uh, Tony took his daughter on a college tour and uh, that got derailed when he recognized the guy who uh, ratted out uh, mm -hmm. his father's crew back in the day. Yeah. So he's been looking for this man, like, the crew's been looking for this man for quite a while. And so uh, he took it upon himself to make sure it was him, go after him, and then he killed him. Uh, Meadow talked to him about like, are you in the mafia? I've been noticing some stuff. And they talked about being open with each other. He said, yeah, yeah, okay, like I'll tell you how it, how it is, but he did not tell her everything. Starting with the end of the episode when he straight up lied about what he did while Eddie. she was at school took care of some garbage, some waste. Yeah, and uh, she obviously noticed, so mm -hmm. yeah, there's no trust in between them. Yeah, no. And while this was happening, Carmilla, Carmilla sorry, was yeah. at the house with the priest and it got heated. We almost did something. We almost kissed. But she didn't. Uh, it got sensual. She definitely wants an escape. Like it's, it's, everything is weighing heavily on her shoulders. Mm -hmm. She has no one to talk to about this. Uh, right. But she still loves Tony, so it's difficult for her to live in this situation. And let's not forget that she now knows that his therapist is not a he, but a she. Yeah, she called uh, Tony out on this lie, because like he keeps lying to her, and then he calls her out on bullshit that did not happen, and she's like, I'm not the liar here. So this is where we are. The family is messed up. Yeah. Let's jump in this episode and see what happens next. <laughs> Don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more of these episodes and check out our Patreon for the full-length reactions. All right, let's go. My wife. All we do is fight. Whose fault is that? Can you believe it? She's jealous of you. Because you lied. <laughs> she didn't know you were a girl. You spilled the beans when you called to change the appointment. Why a female doctor? Because opening up to a male doctor might be different. Pride would get in the way. Kuzumano gave me a choice between two Jewish guys and a paisan like me. So I picked a paisan. What's the one thing every woman, your mother, your wife, your daughter have in common? They're all Italian, so what? Maybe by coming clean with me, you're dialoguing with them. Ah, a way to tell them what he's been thinking when he can't tell them. Is a patient. Most legit people I know, they'd go 100 miles out of their way not to make eye contact with me. You didn't flinch. She likes a challenge? Hmm, she did not answer. <laughs> I'm not gonna insult her and say just the paycheck. Well, I mean, she's more than that. <laughs> That's her job, so she'd get paid the same whether it's him or someone else, but... Just in time, I was just gonna make some coffee. Yeah? How's Junior? Mm. Shit the fuck out! That's how we say hello to our little friends. Well, he's the big boss now, so he's sending goons. Mm. You paying Jimmy for this game? No. Are you paying someone for this game? <laughs> Junior Soprano is the new boss, and he ain't respecting all the arrangements. <laughs> Uh, yeah, the head did. <laughs> I went to something special. The boys are having a little time for me. And he's just a fucking figurehead, sort of, so. So how's your, uh, what's your oldest boy's name? Raphael. He lost his son, you know. Just a fucking kid, a, a baby. Fucking animals, these, these drug dealers. Is he wanna, he's gonna wanna get on this? See what I say about this fucking poison. These kids shouldn't touch it. He didn't overdose, he killed himself. And meanwhile, this piece of shit, he, he gets to walk the streets and sell more of this stuff to young kids. I think he's gonna wanna get on this. What's this motherless fuck's name? Is it someone we know? I wonder if it's someone we know. <laughs> Maybe it is someone we know. I know how long you waited to be made boss. Just don't let certain people take advantage of your good nature. Like oh, yeah. you did to Johnny. Nobody's gonna get over on me. How's your Jewish friend? Hesh? What about him? Hey, he's Tony's friend, not mine. What do you got against him, anyway? Who, me? Nothing. But Johnny likes him. And my son thinks every word that comes out of his mouth is pure gold. Are you telling me that since I'm the new boss, I should tax Hesh? I don't like this. Now she appears innocent, but no, she knew exactly what she was telling him right Anthony, there. You must have really gotten under your collar. Admit it. She's getting revenge on her fucking son through this. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what's going on, bitch. <laughs> what is the matter? He's thinking about the therapist. Can he stand if he doesn't want to stand up? <laughs> Always tired. His mind is somewhere else. <laughs> so how's your job? This one do you care about my job? Can I be nice? That's not why she's here. <laughs> okay, you don't want to talk about your job? Yeah. Well, somebody who gives a fuck. 
I don't know what's wrong with you, but don't take it out. Hey, there's nothing me. wrong with me. Just wanted to talk, that's all. I feel like he's trying to recreate what he has with his therapists in other places. A conversation? Yeah, he doesn't have that with his wife. He's trying to get it with other women. Because he can't have he can have sex with his therapist. <laughs> it's sad because like if only you tried that with your wife, you could have something great, but yeah. Your father was a fair man, Tony. Junior's not so fair. His emotions get in a way. What'd he do? He's taxing me, Tony. How much does he want? 500 large, plus two points monthly on my shine. He is so greedy. Do me a favor, sit tight for now. What do you think about a And while? if we get involved, it's gonna get worse because they're uh. trying to diminish my authority as the new boss in charge. Yes, exactly. We gave him power, but if we make it sound like we're not okay with how he does business, hmm, it's right back to the fight. Therapist. I feel like, yeah, he's dreaming for sure. <laughs> he's singing too. <laughs> we don't see her, but we know it's her. It's gotta be her. He's obsessed. How was that, baby? Oh, the best. Come here. Yep. Don't you have your cannon? Okay. <laughs> no. Uh, but I understand why. She's the one he talks to. She knows everything. She doesn't really judge. She helps him com understand himself. He can't talk about his life to his wife. He doesn't want to. Doesn't want to. He separates he the two. He can't connect. And even if he doesn't say all the details to the therapist, he still is saying enough. He's got to think that Hesh came to you on his own, by himself. Another thing, the, the arrangement, whatever it is, can't be insulting to my uncle. Hesh has got to pay something. I just haven't decided what. He went to New York? Okay. I gotta get back. We'll talk later. How's the veal? It's like rubber. Tastes all right to me. She doesn't want to be here. <laughs> all right, I'm sorry, okay? You don't even know what you're apologizing for. It's our anniversary, Tony. Not yours, mine, and Johnny fucking Sachs. Ours. The problem is that the family never comes first. Last episode, oh, he put the college trip on hold to go after this guy. Like, oh, where's the second thought? She's got a lot on my mind. I'm not thinking straight. But you're not talking about this to her. And had, anyway, last episode, she kind of admitted that she's not okay with what he's doing anyway, so... Should I call the plaza? Yeah, let's go home. Also, it's not about that he's not thinking straight. He's just not thinking about them. Yep. Yeah. And she knows. What do you want me to say? You've changed, Tony, and I resent it. I resent it because it's destroying what little self-esteem I have left. I swear sometimes I think you skeeve me. What are you talking about? You're the mother of my children. How the fuck can I skeeve you? you? See? You're the mother of my children. I feel like I'm just someone you've chosen to procreate with. But you get rid of her to go with someone else to enjoy everything else. And granted, like, her fears and frustrations are all coming from the right place. Like, he's cheating constantly. He's not talking. It's not appropriate of me to take gifts. It's a cup of coffee. No gifts. If you knew, girl. Oh, I'm sorry. I have a car emergency. Yes? What does that mean, diagnostic? I just want to know what's wrong with my car. You know, I know <laughs> a thing I'm through about cars. I can give you the same one brand new. Same one. <laughs> Cash isn't only a friend of you guys. He's a friend of ours. Somebody has to step in so he doesn't get fucked. Frankly, I'm a little hurt. You should have come to me first. Having your dirty laundry in public. Mm-hmm. Wink, wink, wink. <laughs> 500 is a little steep for back taxes, no? I'm not out to hurt anyone. I'd say one and a half on a shy business and 300 on a back tax. 250. Mm. What'd I tell you? Hold on to your cock when you negotiate with these desert people. <laughs> well, is that a yes? <laughs> 250. Okay. As long as he doesn't realize that this is a group effort to calm him down. Yeah. <laughs> it's the therapist again. Yeah. Mr. Soprano. <laughs> I'm gonna see you now. <laughs> you want sex? No. <laughs> Not with you. Fucking sad. Have you ever thought about dyeing your hair? Talk, bro. Wear a wig. Talk to me like you're your therapist. Maybe you could wear a nice business-like outfit. Maybe wear <laughs> something a little more professional. Oh, fuck you, Tony. I'm no whore. Think of it as dress plate. Is everybody in my life bananas or what? Get over here. Go to your cough. You're not treating anyone with respect, man. I just thought maybe we needed to spice things up a little bit. So I suggest to her that maybe she dress a little different. 
something titillating. No, something like this. I'm not talking about dressing like that. Some women are sexier when they, they dress simple. Kind of like, hmm? Like you. You play it down. It's obvious you got a killer body under there. <sighs> That's just his head. He's, he's making lovey doey eyes. But you're gentle, not loud. I like a mother? Like a mandolin. Close enough. <laughs> Maybe that's what he lacks in his life, a caring female figure. Mm -hmm. Are we in a dream or is that real? I think it's really important we talk about this. Do you think you could come back later this afternoon? Dude went in for a kiss. Hmm. I mean, we've just direction of the departed and that happened with DiCaprio in it. <laughs> the thing but, is, yeah. as a therapist, as soon as you see and live through that, I would suggest him to someone else. Yeah. You cannot be biased and be professional if that happens. Yeah, I know. But I mean, maybe she feels like there's so much to uncover from this. I can do, like, she wants to help, but it's a tricky situation and you don't want to get caught in this. He's already sending people following her and... Hmm. I'm assuming he's right there. But yeah, like you said, she embody what he lacks in his life right now. Someone that pays attention. I've had this problem for weeks, but this morning I get in and it starts right off. Uh, looks fine. He took care of things. As much as I might wish to rob you, even I wouldn't try to replace a new start with another. He's honest about it. Really new. It has everything but the price tag hanging from it. He just said the same but anyway. <laughs> Do not do Yeah, poor kid committed suicide up here because of you. Listen to me, I'm gonna give you a break. When I toss you off, oh, no, no, no. if you could fly, I won't shoot you down, deal? <laughs> oh la la. <laughs> We're splitting. <laughs> Somehow I feel like uh, Junior is yeah, and more but... intense, right? As a boss, he's not afraid to do shit like this. He wants to, you know. What happened here? Hmm. Motherfucker said he won't live no more. Yeah. You're intelligent. Smart. Tu n'as rien vu, rien entendu. How much you give? One dollar. Two bucks. <laughs> At least give some to the two other witnesses. I thought I was the only one Junior could make look like that. Yeah, we have an issue. What's the Irish? He took a header off the falls. That junkie fuck was my biggest earner. He's messing up their business. I think you created a fucking Frankenstein in Junior. What about that Sammy Grigio card game? The minute Sammy Grigio used Jimmy's name, it should have been end of story. He doesn't respect how it used to be, and he doesn't work with the people as a group. Yeah. All we want you to do is... I like that's gonna work. After all, he's your uncle. And that's because he's boss, but he never deserved to be boss, so he doesn't think about the others. He just thinks about himself, wants to make his reputation big. Uncle June been by? Once in a while. He's got a lot in his mind. More responsibilities means more headache. He'll be all right, as long as he remembers who his friends are. The fact that they both go to her and kind of imply stuff. <laughs> yeah, but he knows that she has influence on his uncle. It's not a business that forgives bad decisions. And I hate to see him making wrong moves. What are you telling me? Tell him. You got his ear. Oh, yeah. He listens to you. Yes. And if you knew that a you, lot of his decisions come from know. her. I don't want to get involved. No? If you have something to say to your uncle, and bring it up to him. I feel like Tony doesn't realize how, how much influence she has over his uncle. Oh, he, he knows he has some. He knows she has some, but mm. he's, he, I don't think he realizes how much. I pushed for it. I could deal with the Kumars. I knew I was better than them. I viewed them as a form of masturbation for him. I couldn't give him what he needed all the time. But this psychiatrist, she's not just a Guma. For the first time, I feel like he's really cheating and I'm the one who's thirsty. Because it's emotional. It's more than just physical. It's not even physical, yeah. That's why I... Uh, the weak for people who never intended on dying. Um, I don't agree with this. <laughs> you know, Con, we reap what we sow. You admit to accepting his dalliances in the past. You said it was like they were lightening the workload. Providing a wife's duty when you were too busy with the kids in the house. You practically welcomed it. Oh, that's bullshit. You're not without sin in this, Carmella. We're gonna talk about this later. Oh, yeah. How's your car? Mm-hmm. We had an agreement, no gifts. I didn't want to see you get robbed. You had no right to steal my car. I've been scared to death. It's a violation of my privacy. What else have you done? Oh, we did a lot. And we're just at the beginning. Did you want to know? 
Had you followed? I love you. Anthony. I'm in love with you. It's not the Prozac. It's not love either, I think, man. I dream about you. I think about you all the time. You're only feeling this way because we've made such progress. I've been a broad, generic, sympathetic woman to you because that's what this work calls for. It's not the real her. You've made me all of the things you feel are missing in your wife and in your mother. Oh, yes. You're making me out to be some fucking mama's boy. <laughs> I want to make sure we understand each other. Yeah, we understand each other. I don't think you understand her the same way that... You don't love me. Ah, la, la. And he's pissed because he just got rejected. You don't want me to come back anymore? Fine. It's quite the opposite. This is all a byproduct of progress. It should be the end of this girl. At least she's not giving up. So what is it you want to talk about? Octavian. You know, Augustus. Augustus was a Caesar. Not everybody loved him. I don't know that I give a fuck. Everybody loved him because he never ate alone. It was the longest time of peace in Rome's history. He shared his wealth, and all his people loved him. You said that three fucking times. I heard it. His people loved him. What's your well, fucking Well, get the point? message. People don't love you. <laughs> you need to be at least respected you know by your people. The, the bull talking to the sun? They're up on this hill. They're looking down at a bunch of cows. Why don't we run down there and fuck one of these cows? Father says, son, why don't we walk down there and fuck them all? I told you that. Yeah. Why don't we fuck them all? <laughs> okay, I get your point. You I'm not sure you understood the message. I don't know. <laughs> so it doesn't look green. The uncle may turn out to be the right man for the job. I don't know. Oh, no, he wanted the job. With him, it's like we're making one step forward, two steps back. You're going to move on from ducks to horses? I envy them. They got no, no bills, no headaches. One horse likes another horse, they go up to each other, they fuck, that's it. No problems, no hundred questions. Well, yeah, but... So Junior whacked up my money and kind of spread it around, huh? Yeah. Not a bad day's pay. Still, I wish it wasn't your money. You old fucking Jew. Here's my share. <laughs> you want to profit off of your tax? He'd be better, honestly. He thinks about the, the people in, in their little family. He thinks about how they work, their interests, what they're like. He doesn't want the stress, but he, I think he'd be better at it. Dr. Melfi, hmm. there's nothing there, you know. It's psychiatry shit. Apparently what you're feeling is not what you're feeling. And what you're not feeling is your real agenda. <laughs> yeah. She's trying to do what the father said. I was jealous of her ability to help you, to be a sort of salvation to you. I want to be that woman in your life. Come, you're not just in my life. You are my life. Prove it then. Yeah. We'll see where it goes, but I don't know. <laughs> All right, I'd like everybody to raise their glass. That was doo 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 doo. Well, I mean. Okay. <gasps> That's an art. He has a... Oh, that's what you saw? Yeah. To our new boss. Check. Oh, oh, okay. I was stuck Did on the know? name. I was like, John. Do we so know John? I don't know if it was a... The butt. Okay, okay. To Junior. Oh, okay. Hello. This is a type of ending of episode that makes me think of Godfather a little bit. Less intense. So now I didn't know everyone that's involved. Oh, we have everyone on file now. Okay, I like this though. We're introducing something. Hmm. Cool ending oh, of episode. Man. So really we're gonna cool. introduce the fans then. Yes. I like that. It's gonna add some some stress tension and tension to, to the episodes because now like they're coming after them. Junior being the boss, I know we got the speech of, you know, uh, in order to have them being happy, you gotta share your you need wealth. To fuck them but, all. Yeah, <laughs> sort of. So like instead of going after some people there and there, like he's basically making it like, oh see, I'm I'm benevolent, I'm giving back and stuff. But really it's for him he thinks it's asserting dominance. It's like I, I'm I still control you, you eat in the palm like, of my hand. I take care of my people. Basically. Yeah, but that's so where I'm afraid. Be grateful to me. That's where I'm afraid because I feel like he did this this time because of the message. But at the end of the day, I'm afraid he's going to go back to what he's been doing this episode. So his head obviously did this yeah. and the power go got up real quickly. And he likes... He never had this. He never... It, it, the way they talked about this, like he was never recognized and he never got what he thought he deserved. So now that he's been given the title... 
he's he's just he loves it so much he's gonna keep going for that rush and I'm afraid that he's not gonna stop doing his his stuff and if they look at them and he's he, he comes out to be more brutal uh, less careful and and he makes mistakes and they are actively looking at them it could put everyone in danger it's also the fact that with what he's doing is affecting all of theirs uh, yeah, because he doesn't give a all shit. All of their thirst, all of their markets. Yeah, he basically. doesn't give a shit. He something bothers him. He doesn't really think about other people. He's gonna act because he's like, I have the power. I can do whatever I want. Mm -hmm. The speech might help, but like I said, I'm afraid eventually he'll go back to to his ways. Or at least maybe like he's not gonna screw over his people. But with everyone else, he might not be as mm -hmm. careful. Tony should. I. I mean. The thing is, now, considering that there are uh, the feds, the, the, the police is on their case, mm -hmm. if Tony had been named boss, it would have been worse. <laughs> but... Already, yeah. But a boss that is not careful also puts everyone else at risk. And, yeah. And to be fair, if I compare the two, just from, you know, I mean, everything we've seen, but this episode alone, Tony would have been such a better boss. He thinks about everyone. He's nice with everyone. Uh, until he doesn't, he, he can't be, you know? But, but it's uh, the fact that he understands past relationship with between friends yeah. and old friends. He respects he past respect, relationships. He respects them because it worked in the past, so it's still going to keep working uh, in the present, you know? And he doesn't want the job. I feel like he doesn't want the job, so that would make him better because I guess the power would not go to his head. But yeah. He respects every one of these guys. He works with them. He's friends with them. Mm. You know, uh, when it comes to Junior, he's he's barely unless there's something to talk about. Like we never really see him with any of the other he's guys. Not with them. He's putting himself on the pedestal, and he thinks he's so much better. He doesn't know them. He doesn't know how they work and and what they can bring, what they prefer, and stuff. So and Tony, he knows all of them. He knows what they like. He gave his share back to to his friend right there. Like he's. He listens more and he respects them more. So I believe he would have been better, but he doesn't want the stress. That's for sure. Well, I mean, the fact that he gave his money back is, to begin with, he didn't want to take his friend's money. No, but the, uh, the so. way he took the problem, the way he understood what was going on, and he managed to go to the right people, make it, you know, give the right advice, listen to the right, you know, uh, stuff from Dr. Melfi, which, I mean, <laughs> we can talk about that later, but... Yeah. <laughs> He listens and he adapts and he knows how people operate. So what do you prefer? What do you prefer? And he's going to adjust how he does things or how he, uh, what he tells to his uncle. So he adjusts things when it comes to everyone else. Mm. He thinks like you would with a group, not just you up there with everyone else just doing everything for you. Like a leader. Yeah. Not, not really like a boss if you think about it. Yeah. But uh, yeah, we'll see. I hope the speech works, but every time, and it's not just Junior, every time uh, Lydia, Tony's mom, yeah. yeah, every time she has, you know, grievances or something that she she wants to, basically her emotions get in the way, she gets pissed and she wants revenge, she, you know, she whines at him like, oh, I did not say anything, she plays innocent, but she's not innocent, she's aware of what she's doing, she knows she has um, Junior's ear, and she'll tell him what she wants to be done. She's more... Cunning oh yeah. yeah, that's why Give I said. credits for. That's why I said I feel like Tony knows that Junior listens to his mom, mm. but he doesn't understand how powerful she is when it comes to that. Because what Junior was doing, I mean, at some of the stuff we saw, like his friend, that's not Junior, that's her, yeah, who sent the message through Junior because she's pissed at Tony for putting her here. Mm. She's still complaining. She plays the innocent woman who's like, oh, life is so hard for me, but she's so much more in control. But she's playing bingo. <laughs> <laughs> she's playing bingo with them, at least. But what happens when it gets more, even worse? What happens if she starts asking more stuff and, and that creates more problems? Hmm. We'll see. I'm a bit afraid for their uh, little thing. <laughs> I want to go back with, because you were a little bit frustrated with what the priest told uh, oh, you want to talk about Carmela. that now? Yeah. Uh, I just want to say, though, that the way that I perceive it is the fact that you said that since you've been sort of okay with Tony's uh, infidelity, 
It's like if you would say that I don't care what you're doing, do what you want. And for so many years, Tony, Tony uh, just thought that I can do this because my wife is okay with it. So yeah, there's, no that's not, there's no cons consequences with it. That's you know? not really what bothered me. In a way, that's true. She allowed it for so many years. I guess to him, it sounds like, yeah, you can do whatever you want because she's never going to say shit. Yeah. So she... It's sad to say that she allowed it because it's not like he gave her a choice. But the fact that she kept living with him through that, never saying stop, it sent the wrong message. But it's mm -hmm. I think it's bullshit to say that she allowed it or that she... Uh, she basically uh, is okay with it because obviously she's not and what bothered me in that conversation is the whole like oh you should do your duty as a wife and you didn't so you're you're to blame for this this is bullshit uh, and why it's bullshit it's because if she was too tired if she was if life got in the way because she's taking care of the kids and she's taking care of the house then what the fuck is he doing and it's not fair to expect her after you know doing all of this to just be in the mood every fucking night. If you have needs, it's okay. But everyone has needs. She has needs as well. Mm -hmm. And he's not there to fulfill them either. Whether they are emotional or physical needs. Well, so but to his say, husband duty then. They all have, mm -hmm. no, they all have duties. They all have jobs. Mm -hmm. If you cannot get what you want from your wife. Like if she's not there for you when you need that then divorce her, you know? She's not the one for you. Don't tag her, drag her along while you fucking cheat on her every day. And to say it's her fault, like, that's where I disagree. The whole, like, your job is to give him what he wants, you know? I don't like that. It's a partnership. It, it goes both ways. He's not there for her. And if you say she wasn't there for him physically, then, I mean, I guess something was off with the, 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 the way they did things because... Or it's just that he, he has a problem because if he needs it so often that she can't fulfill him, then God damn, you got something's off, you know. And I guess we can we can kind of tie that with what he's looking for in a woman. And I do believe they talked about it a little bit, but I do believe that he's looking for a a mother figure that he never had, you know. That's why he's um, with Carmela. The sex, that's one thing. The discussion, that's another thing. And he's constantly separating his job from his family. So he's not giving her what she wants. She's technically not, it's not her fault, but she's not giving him what he wants either. And she wants yeah. to be there for him. She wants to listen to him, but he's not allowing himself to talk to her. So by proxy, she's not allowing him to unload everything. To lean on her when he needs it. Yeah, so he's turning around and he's looking for people with whom there are no strings attached. People that, uh, you know, don't really matter. People he's not connected to. To let go of the steam. Just forget who he is. Forget what's going on. And just have fun for a just minute. Just be Tony. Yeah, and when it comes to Dr. Melfi, it's the whole conversation thing. He gets to have a caring person that listens. Something he never had with his mom. Something he's been searching for his entire life. And... Now, because Carmela is frustrated, because there are so many responsibilities in a family, she's technically she's not available the way he would want her to be available. But to be fair, like it's it's also bullshit. Like I said, we all have needs, and he's not there for her. So to say it's on her, to say it's it's part of her fault. That's that's why I was no, frustrated. When you're a couple, married or not, like you said, it's a partnership, and uh, I don't need to see in the video, but someone said that when you're a couple. <laughs> When you're with someone, usually it's bullet, it's bullet to say that it's 50-50, you know? Because if, not my words, but someone said those words, if one day, if one day uh, your energy is not there, like you can just give like 20% into the relationship, you need to be able to provide and to be there for your partner and, and provide the 80% that are missing. So, you know, you, you, need to able, oh. you, you need to be able to step up and... And be there and uh, vice versa. But that's you know? the thing, like, if you love her and if you love your family and, you know, the taking care of the children, and that's the thing, are you taking care of the children? Are you helping her with the housework? If she's doing everything and then when you come home, you expect her to be at your beck and call and do everything for you and she's not doing it, so you're blaming her, yeah, you're not there for me, then dude, maybe the workload is too much. Like, maybe you should help her out a little bit, make her feel 
respected and special and she'll scale. give back to you. Maybe scale down the house. Maybe, maybe there's too much. And like, okay, people could argue he also is doing a job. Like he also goes out and he brings the money home. Mm -hmm. People are, people work different ways. People have their jobs. That's good. But to put the blame on one or the other for this, I don't like this. And I don't think she should be blamed for his insatiability, like for his need to have so much and to say that she wasn't able to provide, I'm like, dude, maybe he's the one that's too much. Maybe he's asking for too much. And maybe she could give him what he wants if he gave her back some, some things as well. Like if he took care of her emotional support. Once again, I think that is a clear lack of communication about oh, this, yes. about what they want, what they desire also. I'll, I'll, and so people don't say I'm biased or that, you know, I don't understand the reality of things. Yes, it's true. If she has stopped making efforts in the relationship, she, she, she needs to put her own efforts and he needs to put his own efforts. If nobody's putting efforts, they won't go nowhere. True. But that's the thing. If she stopped making efforts, like they go out, they have, they have, you know, they, they eat together, they dress nice, that's good. When he woke up in the middle of the night and he turned to her, she was like, do you want to have sex? Like, it's not like she would have said no. I think she was totally fine with doing it, but it's just the, the routine got in between them. And I feel like maybe they both stopped putting in efforts like dressing nice or just giving surprises yeah. or it's, Sometimes you got to challenge your relationship in certain ways, like kind of bring it back to the beginning, make it interesting so the flame keeps going because routine can kill a relationship really quickly. And I feel like, okay, if you we want to say that he's, he's not there for her emotionally, yeah, maybe she wasn't a, a, as there for him like she said, but it's a it's a partnership, you know? He's not giving her, like, I'm pretty sure if your husband is cheating on you that much and he's hiding stuff from you constantly and he's lying you're not going to be turned on. You're not going to want to make efforts for him because he's not there for you. True. And as for him, if he's not getting what he wants for, from Carmela, I mean, whose fault is it really? He doesn't want to talk to her. Obviously, what he wants, I think it's there's just, the sex part of it, but he wants an ear to, I, to talk to. I think it's just a huge cause and effect. The fact that he doesn't want to talk about his universe, about the, the illegal stuff, Yeah. Carmela is turned off because he doesn't trust her. He doesn't communicate with her his need and what he's doing. And she's since she's turned off by it, she's detached. He doesn't get what he wants, physical touch and stuff. Like he, so he goes and get it somewhere else, which turns her off even more. Mm. Cause and effect. But you have a big mommy issue, man. Big mommy issue. <laughs> her, his mom was never really the perfect mom. She never. It, it sounds like, you know, the way he talked about her in the first few episodes, she was not there for him. She had a strong way of caring, I guess. He feels like he should respect her. He feels like he should love her, but she's not reciprocating anything. So she's mm -hmm. not giving him the love he craves. So he is looking for a mother figure. Everything he said about Melfi, you dress nice, you're calm, you listen. It's a mother feeling. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, yeah. It's sad because I mean, at the I mean, there's a reason you need to talk about this. You need to be open about the idea of talking about this. But it's going to be difficult to talk about this about uh, with Melfi herself, right? Because she's right now at the center of his obsession. Yeah. But she's also right. Like, yes, you're right now. You say you're in love, but you're not in love. You're craving. You're you know you're thirsty for something that she's offering. But what she's offering is not genuine. It's a job. I don't know how she would be in real life. She could be just as nice in real life, but she's not your friend. She's a therapist. You need she's to be paid. detached from it. She's paid to listen to you, so it's, it's like, not the same. It's like you're saying... <laughs> I'm not saying that Dr. Murphy is a prostitute, but when you're paying someone to say that they love you... They'll they, say they love you. Yeah. <laughs> it's not genuine. Yeah. But yeah. At least it's out. I was a bit shocked by the whole, like, going in for a kiss. I was almost saying, like, okay, are we in a dream? Because <laughs> I thought it was, well, I mean, he was saying all those things, and she did not move back as much. Like, it's like she's, it's kind of like she expected it. <laughs> Might it be the first time that that happened? I don't hope not. Well, I hope yes. No, sorry. I hope it's the first time. No, no, but I mean, I mean, people do write some way that say that, oh, my God, I have feelings for you. I don't know how to react yeah, that's to probably. Yeah. So she, she might have been in shock, maybe, also. <laughs> 
I feel like she expected it after everything he said. It's just mm -hmm. the going in for a kiss was crossing many, many lines, and I, I did not expect that. To me, I feel like this should have been... I, I know it's at the center of his issues, so maybe she's seeing that as a, okay, we're making progress, so we're going to keep talking about it because this is what we need to deal with. This is what we need to help. Mm -hmm. But to me, it's crossing way too many lines. And the car thing, the... He did not say it, but him not saying anything, it might as well have been a yes when he said, uh, is someone following me? Yeah. So the silence might have been an answer. <laughs> Sharon just does come, oh, let's not go there. <laughs> next week. See you next, next wait, wait, week. But all of that, considering who he is and what he does, yeah. that's a lot of red flags. And to me, that should have been the end of it. But I feel like she's thinking, if I reject him now he's going to close himself off even more. And he already said that he did not, like, the, his only options didn't work for him. So he chose her. Kind of like, you know, if someone says, uh, I read a story a while ago. Uh, it was a, a it's, it's fiction, but still mm -hmm. it, it applies. It, the patient was a really problematic one. And the therapist did not really want to take that person as a, as a client. But the patient said something about, like, you're my, like, Tenth nice therapist, like you're basically like the the tenth therapist I've been to in that many years. It never works out. You're basically my last one. As in, if that doesn't work, if it doesn't work between us, uh, I'm done. That sounds ominous. And as a therapist, you might feel like, oh shit, uh, if I fail, like if I, if I give up on that patient, mm. what happens? Is he gonna kill himself? Is he gonna do something bad? Is he like? So it, the, the weight on her shoulders is intense and it's like, it all comes down to you. You got to save this person. And since it's the therapist's job, she feels inclined to help, you know? Mm. You won't give up on these people. But with this guy, it's dangerous. <laughs> with this guy, there are risks. So be careful. It's cool, the new car. That's great. But mm -hmm, he's crossing many lines. Yeah. He's dreaming about her and stuff now. Fuck. Ah, at least he, he, they said it out loud, so it's not a secret anymore. <laughs> it's anyway. not in the open. Yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah, so we'll see how that evolves. The police stuff is scary, but I think it's uh, we for a drama show, it's we cool. We're beginning a new chapter, the one with the feds. Oh, yeah, well, I mean, they were always present, but now they have photos. They're actively present now. They have names, photos, all they need now is proof, so be careful. And with a boss like Junior, who doesn't, you know, eh, he's not conventional, and he doesn't do things the same, and he might go all out. They literally killed a guy in plain sight, in, in daylight, in front of and people. And they did not even give, um, it's quoi, pot de vin en anglais déjà? A bribe? A, a bribe? bribe? Yeah, they did not even give a good bribe. Well, to one of the guys he gave some money, but, <laughs> but that's the thing. Like, if you do that shit in front of the wrong person, and they, they happen to have something to prove it, you're fucked. They can take you and then go up the chain and then prove that there's something going on. Like, you can't do this shit. I mean, okay. right now, the organization is like a castle of cards. House of cards. House of cards, thank you very much. And yeah, the top card is, is, is flaky. It's fl flaking <laughs> right now. Uh, we'll see where it goes, but that was a good episode. Mm -hmm. Thank you guys so much for watching it with us. If you want to see the next episode right away, it is on Patreon already. You can check it out. The link is in the description below. And if you don't want to, the next one will be on YouTube next week. Yes. So, so then, guys. Bye.